Welcome to SBCA's Lumber Connection Podcast, where we discuss today's market and explore tomorrow's trends. Here's our host, Molly Butts. Hello and welcome to Lumber Connection. It's the week of March 7th, 2022, and I'm back in the studio with my regular experts, Ken Timmons and Justin Binning, both of American International Forest Products, or AIFP. Welcome back to the podcast, gentlemen. Welcome. Hey, Molly. How are you? I'm good. Thank you both for being here today. We're, we must be uh, hanging in there. The SBCA is sticking with us here so far. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Maybe a few markets now. <laughs> Well, I, at first, I feel like I say this at the start of every new month, but I don't know how on earth it got to be March already. And yes. second, not to be too terribly cliche, but it really feels like March is indeed coming in like a lion on many fronts, many of which I'm assuming we'll talk about today. And lumber is clearly not immune from all of this. So with that said, I think I'll start by turning it over to both of you for a general update on the lumber market from the past couple of weeks. Indeed is March 2022. And I, I, it's like you make that comment and I think back to like the end of 2020 and we're like, worst is behind us, guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Little do we know. It can't get much worse than that one. No. <laughs> and then uh, 2021 happened and it was like, all right, 2022, this, 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 <laughs> Fresh is, start. this is, you're going to settle down. Things are going to kind of come right. together. And uh, yeah, here we are, March, uh, March 9th, mm-hmm. 2022. Mm-hmm. And uh <laughs> Yeah, it continues. But yeah. big celebration this week in Portland. The pandemic's going to end for the third time now. It'll be oh, great. Perfect. Yep. So yep. Great. Let tomorrow. me know how that goes. <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah, it expires tomorrow. tomorrow. Big day tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Our mask mandates have expired here in Illinois as well. For anyone that didn't know, that's where I live. <laughs> yep. Well, you were hanging in there with us. I think yep, uh, sure Illinois, were. Oregon, one of the last couple of uh, couple of states to right. release. To hold back the beauty. We also have a blockbuster video here still for anyone that That's right. misses that nostalgia. We still have video stores in Oregon. Yeah, not far. <laughs> Kenny, take it away, man. What's going on today? The market, uh, super fun, really interesting. The choppy all over the place. Um, everyone's got ideas. Not all the ideas coincide. And nobody's overly confident in anything. And I don't mean to say that like everyone's running around, you know, willy nilly with no strong opinions based on, you know, stats, numbers, facts, business they've taken. Uh, I just mean to say, you know, I was, I was talking with a listener here on LinkedIn a few days ago and he asked me, hey, what's, what's your outlook for 90 days? And, you know, I could take a guess, but it truthfully, no one knows what 90 days hold. Right. So really. Taking it day by day. Correct. Yeah. The last <laughs> the last two weeks of trading since we recorded previously, it's just been going through with my customers and just being absolutely reasonable with everything, right? Examining how much we have sold, how much we need, how much we think is appropriate, of which, you know, the, the elephant in the room obviously is a large supply of wood in Canada pent up, um, you know, that inevitably sometime will make it into the U.S. market driving a price down. Right. Uh, That's reflected in the futures board this week. Um, You know, early it looked uh, short term bullish, long term bearish. Um, You know, and I think a lot of people assume that pattern. Really, it's just the the big question is, all right, when's the switch flip? Right. 30 days. Is it 45 days? Is it yesterday? Right. Where? And that's really where the quote unquote choppiness lays. Well, yeah. And I mean, it's it's just like it's if it's not one thing, it's another. Right. It just feels like our businesses like when. When we talk about the political climate or whether it's COVID or it's like COVID ended, oh, here's a war, right? And right. it's like we're, we went from stressed out and like tired to like on edge and oh my gosh, are we going to war? And, you know, right. that's on everybody's mind. And so like we can't escape um, yeah. uneasiness right now. Um, and the lumber market is, is no different. It just feels like this day to day uncertainty and nervousness all throughout the chain. It's tense. It is tense. Yeah. But business is still good. Right. So that's the craziest part is there is still good demand and there is yeah. good sales from, I don't want to do the label any sector. It's, right. It's, but it's every segment. Pro dealers, well. trust yards, manufacturers, <laughs> traders, treaters, right? Like the whole thing's healthy. So it is, it's an interesting. But we talk about gas prices, rising interest right. rates, rising cost of homes, right? That's the, 
there's this over this cloud of uneasiness and rightfully so yeah. right and right. you mix that in with really high cost lumber everybody's mm -hmm. on edge and then it's like if we strike down a russian plane tomorrow what does that mean right right you know there's this fear that the market's going to go to zero where is the level of comfortability to again buy more than a protective amount of lumber right. that feels good to you so without all it's that, it's a very emotional it market. It felt like it was going in that trajectory, right? But it really has, and it's just creating essentially a standoff. And I don't want to say there's no action because there certainly is action. We're moving plenty of wood every day still. There is business out there and it's great. But uh, generally, there is a standoff between sawmills who have some order file or right? a lot of order file. Yeah. And customers who have some wood or maybe not a lot of wood. Right, those are the, kind of the two, and it's just a staring contest. Um, and it's it'll be interesting to see uh, which side flinches first, because that will really dictate the price. Who can hold out longer, essentially? Well, no, 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 I don't know. I mean, yes and no, right? But I mean, I think there's a there's a balance there too, right? I mean, it's you've got you've got a couple of sawmills uh, that out of Canada that cut production, right? An ability to ship product. Everybody that has a carload of lumber that was bought over the last three months probably knows what we're talking about. There's a lot of cars from a long time ago that is still yet to ship. So that logistical problem out of Canada is still there and it, it hasn't gone away. Um, and it's not going to clean itself up. I don't think anytime soon, it's going to take some time. Um, and I know we've, we've, we touched on that last time, but um, that piece is looming. Um, but the, the mills are approaching business differently also. Right. And so they're, they're taking a different approach uh, than, than maybe there, there was the last time the market went on this crazy tear. Mills like higher prices, right? We all agree, I think, on that. I mean, they're the ones making it. They want a good return. I also don't think they want to shoot themselves in the foot. And I maybe I, I, I'm just being... Fair statement. Yeah. So I think the approach from everyone has changed and every market is different and every approach to buying lumber um, is changing because we're in unprecedented times. And and so I my big thing right now is what I notice is you have large segments, several, you know, a few different segments in what we do in lumber, right? Throughout the chain of supply. And each segment is not being able, the herd isn't able to all stay together and lie together, right? And so each segment finds themselves entering the marketplace on any given day with needs. And there's this constant feeding going on of lumber, which is allowing product to, to we're seeing some softening in some products, um, but the mills are still able to sell product every day. Right, they're still moving it mm -hmm. out. There's still liquidity in the marketplace, so people are still buying because they have to be buying because business is good and because they don't have the lumber that they need. We still got to truck it. We still got to get it there. Um, there's still order files. They range from three fourteen to four twenty four. Right? right. I mean, that that's your range of, of where you could buy maybe a potential product at a price. Right? There's people taking orders in April, and there's quote unquote prompt wood. It still takes a while to get there. Yeah. And it's getting expensive, more expensive every day with fuel. Right. So, I mean, it's just a lot going on. And, and I think the approach is, as I said, and I've joked a couple of times here, it feels like you're battling day to day. Right. Which is the best approach too, right? Like when you're looking at a market that's tense, elevated in price, uh, somewhat choppy, there's price discrepancy between mill stocks and wholesalers, end users, and prompt checks are expensive and late cars are cheap, right? The most important thing to do with your business as someone who purchases lumber is be reasonable and just be honest with how much you have sold, how much you got coming and just really approach it and bite off an appropriate chunk to me feels like 30 days because if transportation got better tonight, the transportation ferry comes, you know, shakes magic dust over all the rail tracks and we're, we're hucking cars tomorrow. Probably takes about 30 days for all that to roll throughout the country, bleed into inventories, really get felt in the market. Yeah. And so I feel like 30 days is an appropriate span to cover. There's opportunities to get mm -hmm. some deals again, right? It seems like the, the, there's that contraction that's going on in the marketplace through each cycle as the, the that we've been in through this up. We had a two week window where it was a little bit soft and you could get some deals on a few things. Some things didn't flinch at all, kept on trucking, mm -hmm. uh, no pun. And mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Or not. <laughs> but I feel like it's kind of... You know, in, in, in one way, we're kind of getting an opportunity again on some, some things um, to, to get some lumber purchased mm -hmm. um, and get some people's needs covered. And I just wonder, you know, if there's enough stall there that a lot of folks don't get what they need. 
and take the softness for weakness to another level that it isn't. And right. well, they're back in the same boat again. And it's really, that's a great point. It's not weak. If someone's going to make a good deal on lumber over the last week or two and get a great deal or, or take a big counter to a sawmill or something, right? These, the prices are not off much. Can't say the number, obviously, but like well, very, very, very different species and different. I mean, it's... well, no, but I, I just mean, you know, uh, the the levels that people are finding value in, the sure. levels people are willing right. to invest for their business are super close to the MSRP ticket price on the code on the checkout, right? right? Like it's and obviously uh, shipment is a big deal right now. Correct. Right. Yeah. Price is really a secondary focus. Shipment is, is first. Well, and that seems like it. I mean, you guys are c- sort of walking around the this whole idea that like okay there's there's certainly lumber to be had but you know we were talking before we started recording this afternoon and mills are already quoting to your point you know anywhere from they might be quoting 30 days out at this point so when you're talking about looking at 30 days you're looking at more like 60 right once you start adding in shipment and all that yeah yeah for sure and there's been sales there right you know and so it's Again, I, I, you know, the shipment portion right now is extremely vital. You know, the, the quick wood is getting purchased at, let's say, near published levels. But yeah, again, it's just, you know, the, the vibe out there is tense. I mean, that's, that's right. the biggest thing, you know, it's just all that uncertainty. Just, there's not, everybody's just on edge, man. I right. mean, yeah. it, just, it is what it is, but, um, and no one really knows. I mean, if we want to be honest, it's just, right. it, yeah. it's. There's just a ton of uncertainty and we're all in the same boat. Then we've never been in the boat before in, in this storm. Right. So, yeah, we took our, our usual little river boat that we've done every day, all <laughs> life long. And we're in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> well, and I think, you know, I want to circle back to something we were talking about um, offline. And that is just that, you know, can you you were talking about your uh, listener, you were talking to at 90 days and like 90 days is just it's too far right now. It sounds like it's, it's about having good information from the right people and thinking about a much shorter timeline, whether you're, you know, making decisions every day, which seems like the best place to be, or at least, you know, weekly, I just think there's so much uncertainty and so much volatility right now because we just don't know. It's concerning for sure. Right. I completely understand why everyone, I want to know what happens in 90 days too. (laughs) Right. Um, yeah. And I can actually guarantee you what happens if you ask me if the market goes up in 90 days or if it goes down in 90 days yeah. with 100 percent certainty. I'll tell you, yes, <laughs> there's the blanket answer. Right. I mean, it's just too it's yeah. there's too many variables, especially now. I mean, the, the factors on each side of the chart, right, are very strong factors. So it's just it's too deep for right now. One note I will will make out of the FEA publication had an article, um, and what is this Russia, you know, how does that going to impact our lumber market? So I don't want to go too in-depth here because you're tired of listening to this talk, um, but I think it's important. So to sum this up quickly, when you talk about the Russian trade to the EU, the largest impact, obviously, the loss of softwood lumber to the, to the EU, um, which is about 2.1 billion board feet in 2021. So that's just going to add to tight conditions that, that are already in Europe, right? Because they're facing a lot of the same things that we are here in the U.S. market. Uh, but obviously what it's going to do to us is limit European lumber exports to the U.S. Um, and their, their belief is that, you know, will help sustain current strength in North American pricing. So what does that mean? More than likely, probably less European lumber coming into the ports in, in the latter quarters of this year. So something I think that is important, and we've certainly leaned on that trade. It's it's been a big part of of our supply, and so when you talk about losing more, not gaining more product, which ultimately is what we need, right? If we want to get lumber prices back in line or less usage, right? Supply yep. and demand. Yep. Um, yep. One hundred one. Here, lesson. I'm <laughs> classes in session. Uh, so anyway, something to take note of, right? So, all right, we've determined ninety days is too far, and you guys have said thirty, but for the for the sake of the podcast, we've got, you know, two weeks. So we'll get to sit down again and talk through this and see where we're at. So what what can you tell our listeners for the next couple of weeks? What's your best advice as we start to wind down today? My sign off is as normal as be nice to everybody. Be kind to your uh, lumber broker, your favorite one. And, mm-hmm. you know, stay close to those guys and, and do the best you can. Keep fighting the fight. Keep hanging in there. We're, we're all kind of 
I know it's cliche here with the last couple of years, but we all are in it together. I mean, really are. We're all in the same, like I said, the same boat. We're all dealing with the same things and we're all working our tails off uh, wherever you're at and whatever you're doing. You're busting your butt. That's for damn sure. You're working it harder than you ever probably have. So tip of the hat to, to you. Uh, and I hope your business is successful and growing and thriving. Call us if we can help. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better. Give us a shout. We'll dial you in. Sounds good. Well, thank you guys both. I think that that will wrap up our episode for this week. Ken, Justin, thank you so much for your continued expertise and enthusiasm. As always, I've enjoyed our time together, albeit brief, and I look forward to the next installment of Lumber Connection. Thanks, Molly. Thank you. Thanks, guys. This has been a Lumber Connection podcast by SBCA. If you have a question you'd like a guest to answer on a future podcast, send it to podcast at sbcacomponents.com.